So G-Shock released the DW B500G1 at the end of 2022, rather unceremoniously and largely unnoticed by the so-called watch community. Well, I bought one for about 130 bucks directly from the G-Shock website, and it's bloody goddamn awesome. It encapsulates almost everything that is so great about G-Shock. However, it also gives us a glimpse of the future of watches and their role in our lives. But most importantly, it demonstrates why Casio is perhaps the only brand in the world that could have the potential to take back dominance of the watch industry from the Apple Watch. Now there's a lot of interesting stuff to unpack and explore, so let's get into it. Tracy to kids. It's here at last, the new Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio that keeps you in constant touch with your buddies. Powerful, fully transistorized. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, bomb is armed. I want my money by 11 a.m. No wires needed. Freeze! You've got mail. Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio is a real electronic instrument. If it drops below 50, it blows up. Make sure all the fellows get their A-OK Dick Tracy wrist radio so they can keep in touch. Over and out. Yet voices travel back and forth. You've got mail. You've got mail. You've got mail. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. I'll do a very quick wristwatch check before we get into this. Uh, this is the Squiley 1521 Azzurra and I'm actually wearing it on the waffle strap from Wrist County Watch Club. Typically, as you've seen in the past, I wear this strap with my Tudor Submariner. I had the, uh, <laughs> the epiphany the other day, why don't I swap them around and see what it's like? And I think it definitely works. So how did Apple take over the watch world in such a remarkably short amount of time, especially with such a pedestrian, uninspired, very derivative, bland, kind of boring design. But also, uh, what is a smartwatch? According to Wikipedia, they are classified by the following, and I quote, a smartwatch is a wearable computer in the form of a watch, end quote. Dig a little deeper, and the history of this newest genre of watch has actually been with us, albeit in a far more rudimentary form, since the late 1970s and early 80s, when Hamilton and Seiko, via their subsidiary Pulsar, both created the first watches with user-programmable memory. Throughout the 1980s, it was very much the domain of Japanese horological giants, Casio and Seiko, who both competed to outdo each other by pushing the capabilities of digital watches with ever more adventurous tech, from calculators to data banks, TVs on the wrist, and everything you can think of in between. But most notably, the RC series, which was the first Seiko watch to interface with a computer and was released in 1984. By the 1990s, following the explosion of American computing, Timex got in on the action by introducing their Data Link watch in 1994 that could wirelessly transfer data to and from a PC in order to sync with Microsoft Schedule Plus, a predecessor of MS Outlook. With the subsequent advancements in cell phone technology, mostly the phone and computer companies then took over dominance by the early 2000s till around 2010. We're talking about brands like Sony Ericsson, Samsung, IBM, Motorola, Blackberry, yeah, you remember Blackberries? Microsoft, Epson Seiko, Citizen, and many more. The list goes on for quite a bit. But what is important to note here is that this coincided with the advent of Bluetooth connectivity. Sony Ericsson teamed up with Fossil and released the first watch in the world with Bluetooth technology. This was the MBW100 in 2006. But let's skip to a few years earlier, like a Tarantino movie. This watch is on your daddy's wrist when they were shot down on that Hanoi. Because back in 1999, Samsung launched the world's first phone watch, the SPH WP10. Now these forms of tech were merged over the following decade to create what we mostly define today as smart watches, culminating in the market dominance by Apple in 2019, which continues to grow annually, even today in 2022, during the making of this video. Apple has a knack for simplifying their designs into something very sleek, 
a very efficient, intuitive, minimalist, almost in a kind of Bauhaus way. Apologies to any Max Bill fans, but <laughs> it is true. And my personal loathing of the Apple Watch aside, it does have mass appeal. God only knows why. The Apple Watch not only swept most of the previously mentioned brands aside, but today its success even threatens the traditional mechanical and quartz-based watch industry, outselling all other forms of watches combined. Along with the post-COVID world of cancelled Basel worlds, a higher cost of living crisis, natural inflation, journalistically compromised YouTubers turning into watch dealers, out of touch watch brands, and their outsourced or elitist marketing we have discussed before. This is forming to be very much like a second quartz crisis, only this time a smart watch crisis, if you will. The only difference is this is happening far faster and nobody is doing anything about it. It's no surprise really, the Apple's design is so generic and bland, it could never insult the delicate sensibilities of the quick to cancel social media raised Generation Z. Having everything streamed instantly has resulted in Gen Z being far more self-entitled and generally impatient, along with the solipsism and real world social awkwardness that comes with needing to be online constantly in order to feel more validated. There's no way some of these younger Gen Z people could weather such a storm yep. without quitting. And so they're really good at presenting a confidence that they don't have. They sound like they have all the answers when they don't. It raises the question, is that bad? I came three countries besides the US. I suck at history. I was like, my worst subject. Can we do like science? No, <laughs> no, no. Any three, any three, you know this. A country? Oh my geez, this is terrible, oh my god. Um. In an increasingly digitized world, ruled by FOMO, where social media has exacerbated and emboldened every narcissistic tendency, where everyone wants to be seen and tracked, the addiction or desire to always be connected is indeed a powerful one. So much so, if you are not online, you can't even get a job or go dating, even start a business. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. But there is a balance. Even though it is amazing, the technology that is made in here, and that I did really enjoy it, I'm too paranoid to wear these, and I don't like being accessible 24 hours a day whenever somebody wants to contact me. I hate that. I need my downtime. And with all of the news that was surrounding COVID, I started to get very anxious. I was watching the news 24 hours a day. It was nonstop. I was staying up late, getting up early, just looking at the news, and I wasn't slowing down. Now, I'm not generalizing and saying all Gen Z is the same. Of course not. Uh, everyone's different, right? Th these are just trends that I see or I'm, I, I'm kind of observing in society. Uh, when's the last time you had a conversation with a complete stranger and they didn't look at you uh, as if you just asked to put the lotion back in the basket, right? <laughs> a month or so ago, my phone died, um, mainly due to my stubbornness for donkey's years of refusing to upgrade. So I was without a phone for a few days and quite honestly, it was great. The only tech on me was my trusty watches, and suddenly I felt like I was back in the early 90s. As if you wanted to reach me, you had to wait until I got to a computer to reply to an email, or if I was around a device with cute little numbered buttons on it. In fact, it made me appreciate my watches more profoundly, and for a few days at least, I was in some kind of anxiety decreased anonymity and zen-like state. But the world, as it always annoyingly and inevitably tends to do, soon caught up with me. By day three, it was clear I could not communicate to my business partners and family effectively, as well as my clients for the work I do outside of, well, this. And so by day four, it was obvious I was going to lose some serious money. And so I caved in and got a new phone. So I get it, for the most part, we need cell phones. Fine, I hesitantly accept that. A watch always connected with alerts, emails, a phone, etc., in my opinion, is unnecessary for me. Maybe it's just my generation. In my day, life was a challenge, not a game. Well, now it's both at Blockbuster Video, where the challenge never ends. I'm from an age of waiting for dial-up to connect, and you got mail making a trip to Blockbuster to see if there was even the possibility of watching that new release. 
when less plastic movie stars got there by something called talent, not nauseatingly cringe TikTok dancing videos, or cutesy pets with more followers than culturally important icons, and books, remember those? Anyways, you get the picture. So who can really fight back in terms of traditional watch brands? There is only one, in my opinion, that has the chance of competing, and that is Casio, or more specifically, G-Shock. So this is my G-Shock DW5600, and it's the most faithful modern descendant of the original G-Shock, the DW5000, that changed the horological world back in 1983. Uh, it's been my go-to cardio watch for about half a decade now, but I thought, you know what? It's time for an upgrade. Enter the DWB5600G1. Obviously, it's a continuation of the original famed square shape, which actually is octagonal, but regardless, the scale, lovable distinctive shapes and retro futurist looking detail, reminiscent of austere brutalist architecture, is largely unchanged. However, this time we have a cloudy, smoky grey translucent resin in a gradient that fades into jet black towards the ends of the strap, further enhancing that look of modernity. Interestingly, this watch was part of a collection of several new G-Shock squares inspired by graffiti artwork and the bold colours found in urban city environments. This largely monochrome watch has vivid cherry red detailing and is actually the most understated of the bunch. Instead of the historic Super Mario-esque brick pattern, we get a recessed red Tetris-like motif that evokes the title sequence of Total Recall. And I'm talking about the Verhoeven classic, not the rubbish remake. The overall look is masculine, aggressive, maybe a little bit dangerous like a Black Widow spider, and works very well with the negative display, which, in this newer 3509 module, is far more crisp and legible in any light, and with the Auto EL backlight, it will turn the most ardent hater of negative displays into a fan. But what attracted me to this particular model? aside from the cool look and all the functionality you've come to expect in a G-Shock, is two features that I personally have never used in a G-Shock, and makes just enough use of smartwatch technology without falling into the trap of wearing a wrist-top computer that further intrudes on your privacy or makes you dependent on it. So this connects to your phone via Bluetooth to a free app, very easy to use, where you can specify the world time, the alarms, oh, and there's also a phone finder. So you press the button here, hold it down, and your phone will make a noise in case you, you know, you've left it under a pillow or in a coat pocket. Very nifty, very easy. But my favorite function is actually the synchronization. It will uh, sync up to your phone and auto-correct the time, so it's always absolutely dead on. And that's it. No intrusive emails, no uh, text, no, none of that. This is as smart as I want it to be. The folks at Apple are no fools. They know Casio is nipping at their heels, as take smartwatches out of the equation, G-Shock was, and still is, the highest selling watch of all time. Today, they have newer triple sensor ABC equipped GPS mapping outdoor watches, along with their higher end G-Shocks that now comes with the kind of fitness and health tracking capability that can compete with any Apple Watch. So Apple have pivoted their designs and marketing in a more active lifestyle direction. The new Apple Watch Ultra. Ultra's design pushes the boundaries so you can do the same. But this is still no match for G-Shock. Firstly, the vast majority of G-Shocks, like this one, are actually ISO qualified for diving, with a very capable 200 meters of water resistance. Even my older DW5600, that can be snagged for under 50 bucks, can be used for scuba diving. Secondly, the inherent toughness. The inner layered special cushioning structure protecting the actual watch module that gives the G-Shock its proverbial gravity-defying shock resistance can now be made to fit in a watch as small as your average automatic sports watch. This was proven in 2020 with another G-Shock I purchased. So this is the GMS5600, originally marketed as a woman's watch. Uh, I bought it for myself, for my six and a half inch wrist, it's absolutely perfect and it wears amazingly comfortable. But why it's so important and it's peculiar, it was completely ignored by the so-called watch journalists because it is a momentous occasion. 
that it shows just how small you can get a G-Shock protected case. It's exciting because it shows you what's coming next or, or the possibilities of what's coming next. Just imagine a Pro Trek decked out G-Shock this size. I mean, it's definitely gonna happen. The superior robustness also includes a higher anti-magnetism, a wider range of temperature variations it can deal with that would see the wearer perish way before ceasing to function and obviously not needing to update or dock and charge. With a quick change of battery, you can do it yourself. And many today are also available with the grab and go ease of solar power. With that inherent toughness and functionality, but being able to be made even smaller means they stand a very good chance of fighting back against the Apple upstart. Coupled with the fact they are already well known for their more fun designs, daring use of materials, historic achievements everywhere from space to the battlefield, and perhaps most exciting of all, how it's permeated into pop culture, to fashion, to music, to cinema, and many cool collaborations. So you've got to ask yourself, would Keanu Reeves in speed look as cool wearing an Apple Watch and not his uh, G-Shop? I know, right? Do you know what a bomb is, Jack, that doesn't explode? It is a cheap gold watch, buddy. Dennis Hopper's villain in the movie uses mechanical watches as a timing component in the detonation device of his bombs. The hero defeats him, and so the whole film is actually a horological metaphor. The modern 90s G-Shock defeating the dated old technology that preceded it. But think about it like this. Would you want to wear a smartwatch that has the possibility of being remotely hacked and tracked, probably most extreme of all in a combat situation, or needs to be charged in the middle of a perilous expedition or worse, a battlefield? Every professional soldier, medic, and law enforcement personnel that I know wears a G-Shock. There is, however, one big Achilles heel to both the smartwatch and the G-Shock. They both look absolutely ghastly in more formal wear especially when suited and booted. It just looks, well, wrong. They're class A even. But on average, the G-Shock costs far less than most smartwatches. Snag a quartz dress watch for 80 bucks like I did in my recent tank watch video from the most important and greatest watch brand in the world, Seiko of course, and bingo, the ultimate any situation two-piece watch collection for less than 200 bucks. I see smartwatches the same way. It's perfectly fine to own one, but it should not be your only watch. The same way a G-Shock shouldn't be your only watch. The art, refinement, tradition, style, and function of wearing a watch should never be lost. It should be encouraged. And in some ways, at least smartwatches have got more people wearing something on the wrist again. We can be thankful for that. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments, especially what you want to see in a smartwatch. Maybe you love them. Uh, that's absolutely fine too. Uh, what would you like to see in a G-Shock? And who do you think has the best chance of taking on the might of Apple? Uh, oh, and don't forget to like this video. Very important indeed. Uh, I have to go and return some videotapes. So I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Onwards and upwards. Ciao.